Many ages ago, from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in his own image. Long after the great flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant. Twenty-one centuries from the time the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah. Thirteen centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, and Miriam danced in freedom. Eleven hundred years from the time of Ruth and Judges, one thousand years from the, from the anointing of David as king, in fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets. In the in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, while the whole world enjoyed a space of peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the eternal Father, 
desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit and nine months of growth in the womb of his mother. Now in our own time, in the activity of our in the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh. Please rise as you are able. As we sing, O come all you faithful. And we'll bring the lights back up. <coughs>
He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Titus, chapter 2, starting at the 11th verse. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, right, and God, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Let us rise to welcome the gospel in song. Those whom he favors. When the angels had left them, 
and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Our lives. 
It is one of the binding forces of the family of God, the family of which we are a part. You see, the Christmas story is our story, too. And the story that we tell this evening is about God's unconventional inbreaking. God has woven it all together from generation to generation and has woven us into the narrative as well. So as we tell the story of God's incarnation, we proclaim those Advent promises of hope and peace and joy and love. The names of the four candles on our Advent wreath and of Christ, the white candle in the center of the wreath that we lit tonight. We come to hear this story every year because we know in our very being we need to go and hear it again and again. And we tell this story because it does bring us hope in the third year of this pandemic and all that has wrought. And we need to hear that hope as we, as we find ourselves powerless, perhaps unworthy, and maybe even unwelcome. We need to hear that hope. Now, after I've been here for a couple of years, I came across this box high on the shelf in the sacristy, okay? That's that room where all our communion stuff is stored and where we prepare the elements for service and ceremonial robes, etc. are kept. And it was way up on the high shelf and it was back in the corner. Of course, I was naturally curious. So I opened the box to find it carefully and obviously lovingly packed fresh ornament juices. And you know it had all the usual characters, right? Baby Jesus, Mary, Joseph, shepherds, angels, wise men, and a wide assortment of animals, and this figurine. Now, I have to admit that before joining the community of faith here at RLC, I've never seen such a figure included. And certainly not in, included many major scenes that I've collected over the years. So I wanted to hear the story about this guy, and I consulted none other than charter member Tom Evans. And the story I got was that he painted and donated the sect. And so I asked him, well, what's up with this one? He seemed surprised that I didn't know. Pastor Heidi, that's the beggar. Okay. Don't we all come to the manger as beggars? I think that's the most important part of the story that we tell. We all come to the manger, just like those shepherds long ago, not quite trusting what we heard, but with the curiosity and the expectations of things in our head that we've heard about God. And we come to the manger to see if it is really true. Did God, in fact, Show up. The art chosen for this evening's bulletin answers the question. This is indeed how God shows up. That's what its title is. And the artist writes this about her, her, her art. Each year, we tell the story because it is raw with joy and pain and the complexities of being human. For this is how God shows up, in a child who cries, in hands that hold, in human flesh, in life, and in death. And it is in that nature that God chose to rewrite the human story. God fulfilling the promises of old. God sleeping on human skin. Mary, who said, yes, yes, I'll be Theotokos, I'll be God there. To Joseph, who set his hurt and fear aside and said, I'll be there. It is at this manger, standing as beggars, that we are all born. And that Christ is born in each of us. And so we all become God-bearers. And this is how St. John of the Cross interprets this thought through his poem adapted from Love Poems from God, translated by Daniel Levinsky. If you want, the virgin will come walking down the road, pregnant with the holy, and say, I need shelter for the night. Please take me inside your heart 
my time is so close. Then under the roof of your soul, you will witness the sublime, the sublime intimacy, the divine, the Christ taking birth forever as she grasps your hand for help, for each of us is the midwife of God. Each of us. Yes, there under the dome of your being does creation come into existence externally through your womb, womb, dear pilgrim, the sacred womb of your soul. As God grasps our hearts for help, for each of us is his beloved servant, never far. If you want, the virgin will come walking down the street pregnant with life and sin. So, how do you see yourself in the story of God's incarnation? Are you one of the ones who foretold it, as in Isaiah? Or perhaps are you Mary, to whom the angel said, do not be afraid? Mary, curious and cautious, but at the same time brave, as she asked, how can this be? How can this be? Upon learning that she has been chosen as the Ethiopian. Could you be Joseph, to whom the angel said, Do not be afraid, who makes a life-changing choice as he accepts responsibility for a baby growing within Mary, even though he knows it is not his? Perhaps shepherds, to whom the angel said, Do not be afraid, who said, Let's go check this out. And they saw God show up. Why are you the wise men? He followed a star for two years, not knowing where that star would take them, but had hope just the same. Are you part of the menagerie, witness to what no one else saw? Are you this beggar, knowing that you needed to be there, but not knowing quite sure why, but you came anyway? Christ came to us as a child, weak and vulnerable and helpless. Yes, God showed up. And it is in the telling of stories, our stories, that we find meaning and understanding. What is the story that you will tell? Amen. We continue with the singing of a little town of that. Again, please ride with you for our call for people. <clears throat>
coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infinite love is more to us this night. With choirs and angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures in the whole earth. Sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. Especially this day, we, we, we remember Ukraine. God of grace, hear our prayer. You cherish those who are most vulnerable, protect infants and children, and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain. Especially today we remember Nancy Downey, Bella Bolton and family, Amanda Milton, Lori Shell and family, Linda Morissette, David Howe, and all those that we name before you now. Shelter refugees' families and those who have no home. God of grace, your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom the season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missing loved ones, or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. You welcome those who have died in the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with the lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. I invite you to be seated. As this year is drawing to a close, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all of your prayers, for all of your gifts, and most importantly for all of your presence here at RLC. We normally would at this time like pass the plate, collect an offering, but you know it's it's COVID time. And so we have an offering plate there in the narthex, as well as a QR code on the back of the boat. Again, thank you.
abundance, receive and bless these gifts that we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace, poured out in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
This evening, you can choose to come to the rail to receive communion. If you desire grape juice, it is in the silver tray right here at the head of the aisle, and we also offer gluten free bread. Please communicate that to me. Please come to the aisle, through the, come to the rail from the center aisle, and then fill in. And when you leave, go down the side aisle back to your, back to your seat, deposit in your cup, and the bowl will run for life. Come, all is prepared.
you and speak to you. Jesus grants you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may extinguish your candle. As we sing, go tell it on the mountain.